We have had a really kind of jam-packed morning, so it's really great that actually you've just got a little bit more time to spend on a new piece of research that we have been doing on the Northern Irish grocery market. Um, so again, this piece of research was commissioned in light of Brexit, in light of anticipated changes, um, and it's really about understanding where the market is at the moment, but also particularly looking at um, the impact on, on the sentiment of shoppers that are shopping in Northern Ireland, and also underpinning that with customer and category behaviour. Um, and the outcomes of the, of the research is really looking at um, category challenges and opportunities for you that will inform your future uh, strategies in this market. So the presentation itself is going to be given by Cleena Lynch and also by Cora Campbell. Uh, they're both at Kantar Ireland and they're both consumer insight specialists. So I'm just going to hand you over. If you've got any questions, of course, as per this morning, just please jump in and ask them. And we'll have a Q&A session afterwards. Um, and we'll also circulate around the presentation as well. So thank you. Thanks, Maria. Hi, everybody. I think some of you know me already, and my colleague Cora Campbell as well. So following on from Matt's presentation this morning, you saw the UK picture. So we're here to give you a bit more of a close-up on the Northern Ireland piece, and I'm really glad that all of you could stay on for it. I know it was a bit of a bonus last-minute session for you. So when we talk about Northern Ireland, um, we actually cover the Northern Irish market from the Dublin office, and we have a panel of 650 homes up there that are scanning their shopping for us continuously. They're telling us what they buy and where they buy it, etc. So on top of that research, what we did for this piece in conjunction with Maria was talk to them about their attitudes to Brexit and their attitudes to shopping in general, how they feel about grocery spend, etc. So harking back to what Tara was opening the day with, what you're going to hear about from us is the market and category opportunities for Northern Ireland. We're going to look at your routes to market, we're going to talk about your retailers, how you can win with them, and we're going to talk about your shoppers and how you can get into their baskets. It's going to be a few things we touch on. There's going to be pricing. You're going to hear more about it. You heard some this morning. One side of that is certainly price sensitivity and round, round pound price points. But the other side of it is also where you can stand over your premium as a brand. And as brand owners, how you can frame those conversations with retailers. So I'm going to hand you over to Cora, who's going to take you through the first section, and then I'll be back with you. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Lena. Hi, everyone. Um, as Lena said, we're going to talk about Northern Ireland in terms of the grocery market. And I thought it would be good to just kick off. I'm not sure how much everyone knows about Northern Ireland and, and um, the grocery market there and what it's worth. Um, we just put things into context. In terms of Northern Ireland, if you think about um, the percentage of value sales um, versus Republic of Ireland. So the Northern Ireland market is worth about 35% of the Republic of Ireland market. And in terms of monetary spend, that's about 3.1 billion pounds sterling. Um, it's growing at 1.1%, um, but when you compare that to Republic of Ireland, Republic of Ireland is actually growing at 3.7% year on year. And then if we look across the GB, it's always good to look in context of GB. It's around um, 105 um, billion pounds sterling and growing about 0.3%. So in terms of the market and how it's um, broken down, we've looked at it in terms of just the sectors and, and what they're worth. Um, and what's really clear and stands out for us is that Republic of Ireland versus Northern Ireland. Republic of Ireland has a much higher percentage of spend going on fresh products. So that's fresh dairy, fresh meat, fresh fruit and veg. So a much higher percent, almost half of our spend in the Republic is going on um, fresh produce. And you compare that then to Northern Ireland, you know, that's, that's considerably less, so 43.6%. 40, so Northern Ireland is more about you know, ambient, a higher percentage of spend on ambient, on frozen, a little bit more on alcohol as well, not sure what that means. But, um, but yeah, so they're, they're very different in terms of where that spend is broken down. But that also means that the shopper in Northern Ireland is quite different in terms of their behaviour uh, versus uh, the Republic of Ireland. So because in the Republic we re we we buy a lot of fresh um, and our high, high percentage of spend um, goes on fresh. We're in and out of um, retailers 270 times throughout the year. So frequency of shop is 270 times per year. Um, we spend about 99 euro um, per week um, and we buy about 62 packs. But in, in terms of Northern Ireland, there's a little bit of a difference there. So again, there, I guess the nature of the market is that the spend is higher on ambient food. So they're not going back to replenish um, as, as often. Um, so 263 times in the year. Their spend is about £82 <laughs> sterling per week. And again, the same t in terms of number of packs. So it's about 62 packs. Um, 
In terms of the retail landscape then, we know that in the Republic of Ireland, you know, you see the figures every every um, every period that we release, you know, Tesco, Supervalue, Duns, all fighting for number one spot. In the north, Tesco is very much the number one retailer and have been, so they're kind of streets ahead and the competition is really for that second spot, so Asda and Sainsbury's really fighting it out there for the second spot in terms of um, their retailer share. In the red here we have total symbols, so that's convenience outlets. So that's at about 9%, hovering around 9% at the moment. Um, and if you compare this to the Republic of Ireland, it's about, the convenience has about 3, 3.6% um, share of the market. So the convenience channel in Northern Ireland is much more developed um, and, and has a higher percentage of share. And then we have Lidl as well, so about 5%. So much different in terms of, of the retailers and, and how they work. Um, obviously there's no Aldi in Northern Ireland either, so that, you know, that's a key difference there. So that's just an overview of terms of Northern Ireland versus Republic of Ireland and we're going to look at some of the opportunities for, for Irish suppliers and Irish retailers going north. Um, so we have, we look at pricing as Kleena said, so definitely getting your price right is very, very important um, <coughs> and the round pound price, price point resonates um, very strongly with Northern Ireland um, shoppers. Local is really important, more important for some categories than others, so um, fresh being, being really important there. Um, then, yes, price is a factor, but premiumization is really key there, and understanding how premium brands can really um, kind of do a better job in Northern Ireland, because the, the brands are very important to Northern Ireland shoppers, um, and there is that, the kind of a premium role that they can play. Um, we will look at cross-border. We do anticipate that it will increase, um, but maybe not as high a level as, as we might, might think. Um, brands and brands being really important in Northern Ireland is really key. Um, and also, we believe that grocery has resilience in, against Brexit versus other industries. Um, so versus eating out and, and dining out, etc. Um, and clothes, etc. Um, etc. So we're just going to go through um, these points. I'll go through the first three. So grocery does have resilience against Brexit. And we asked our shoppers since um, since the Brexit vote came in last last June, do they feel that they're worse off, better off, or the same since then? And um, so currently, the financially they feel so. Seventy percent of the total respondents feel actually the same, and um, so not very much much difference. Um, but when you look at this for Northern Ireland alone, you can see that there's a real, um, almost a third of Northern Ireland households actually feel, since Brexit, I am actually worse off, and I feel worse off since then. Um, and there's a key, that's a key difference between Northern Ireland respondents and the Republic of Ireland respondents. So the Northern Ireland respondents and, and shoppers are really, they're feeling the hit and they feel that they are worse off. Um, and they also expect to feel worse off in the future um, versus the Republic of Ireland. So this is total respondents, it's about um, 48% uh, feeling that they're going to be worse off. Um, but in Northern Ireland, over 50%, so over half of shoppers in Northern Ireland feel that the future is not looking good. They're going to be worse off in the future. And this compares to only 27% um, in, in the Republic of Ireland. So definitely there is a feel that things, you know, they're not looking great for Northern Ireland and, and, pe and the shoppers and the people there absolutely feel that. Um, and they believe, you know, over half of shoppers believe that Brexit will impact their shopping. Um, so it's going to impact what they buy. So 54% of everyone um, who responded believe, yes, it's going to impact what I buy. And um, 54% of Northern Ireland shoppers, um, and interestingly, just, just slightly more, so 55% um, of the, the Republic of Ireland shoppers. We also wanted to understand, will Northern Ireland brands be more important um, going forward now since Brexit? 34% um, of respondents say they will, um, and it's no surprise really that 39% you know, will be more important for the Northern Ireland shopper, and they believe, yes, Northern Ireland brands and local will, be, will become more important. However, and as I said, we do believe grocery um, will be more resilient against Brexit. Um, we gave our shoppers or our respondents a list of categories um, to understand have they cut back on spending in, on any of these industries. So we looked at eating out, clothes and fashion, um, hobbies and leisure, 
Some people say they haven't cut back at all, health and beauty, etc. So since the vote last June, what we're seeing is that 16% of Republic of Ireland shoppers say they've cut back on grocery, whereas this is 20% for, for, for Northern Ireland. And then we asked them again, OK, well, you know, in 2017, do you plan to cut back on any of these industries? And you can see there's a clear difference there. So that's 25% of Northern Ireland households um, say, yes, they plan to cut back on grocery. Can I ask a question? Yeah. If these are consumers. Yes. Why would one in six consumers in the Republic of Ireland cut back on grocery spending because the UK voted to leave the EU? And that's just one in six, but you can take it up to like half of Irish consumers in the South. So this I've cut back on eating out because of Brexit. This is so when we say um, the Republic of Ireland respondents, it's the border county respondents. So we, we went to the Northern Ireland panel and then we went to all of the panellists um, around the border counties. So this is specifically shoppers on the border. So is that the cut back spending in the Republic and they've shifted into the North? It's their overall have you cut back spending. Um, so it's not necessarily spending in the North or in the South. Only 28% haven't cut back since three quarters of them have cut back spending. S since Brexit, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is. I just want to come in on one, just in terms of surveys. And I think consumers sometimes have a habit of saying they'll do something or they are doing something, and then what their actual actions don't reflect that. Yeah. Hey, but this is fact. I'm, look, I'm not looking at the I will put back. I'm looking at the hand put back. Yeah, and the, and the, I do believe this is what consumers are saying they're doing. And um, so the beauty about what we can do then is we can actually look at the data to say, have you cut back? Um, and, and to understand what the change in behaviour has been. Um, so this is something we're going to continue to look at going forward to understand you know, what the impact has been on the market. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so in terms of, of grocery as an industry, and there are other industries that um, are, I guess, more in, in the firing line in terms of where shoppers are actually, what's front of mind in terms of where they believe they're going to cut back. So the likes of eating and drinking out, the likes of clothes and fashion are top of mind when shoppers are thinking about things to cut back on. But we do need to be aware of the challenge there for grocery. Um, and this, these are just some of the, the coping mechanisms that we're beginning to see come through. So the frequency of purchase of Northern Ireland shoppers, they've, cut, uh, they've increased the frequency of purchase. Um, and in line with that, they're cutting back the average spend per trip. So um, while two years ago they were spending about 18, 20 per trip, currently they've cut that back to 17 euro, but the, the number of times that they, they shop is actually increasing. So in a bid to kind of cut back, they're, they're doing a little and often shop. Um, so three key opportunities from that that we believe will be key for any Irish suppliers. Um, number one is that, you know, dining in, replacing eating out. So, so again, there is that opportunity. If people are cutting back on eating out, um, there's an opportunity for our industry to, to get on the back of that. Um, the affordable indulgence is really important. And it's a trend that we did see through the recession here. You know, people want an indulgence, a treat that they're able to afford and how you know, suppliers can actually tap into that. Um, and then little and often. So they're already starting to do that little and often, the more convenient shop. Um, so really buying into that. And that's a kind of, you know, the, the convenience trade is very much um, alive up there. And, you know, it already has 9% share. So focusing on the dinner mission is really important for that dining, um, so that dining in. So um, the dinner mission accounts for 13% of spend um, in Northern Ireland. Um, pe people shop at about 35 times um, per throughout the year. But the key categories, if we're thinking about this opportunity, key categories that are in this mission um, are the meat, fish, poultry, and those categories, that, um, fruit and veg, et cetera, um, for the dinner mission. In terms of the indulgence, again, indulgence is worth um, about 6% of, of the Northern Ireland, Ireland market. Um, categories that can really capitalise here are thinking about your ambient categories, your bakery categories, things that are frozen, so the likes of ice cream in there, treats that really resonate with, with shoppers that they can afford. 
And then baskets, so increasing kind of um, increasing convenience trips. Baskets account for about 20% of, of um, shopper spend in Northern Ireland, and categories that can really um, can really open up and play up here are, are ambient dairy and fruit and veg. They're very much part of that basket shop. Um, so the second op op area of opportunity I'm going to look at is about getting your price right. So this is really important um, when thinking about the Northern Ireland shoppers, given their kind of their, their frame of mind around being kind of worse off this year. So we asked what's important um, to, the, to the shopper today. Um, we all love a bargain, and 96% of um, households have said, yes, I love a good bargain, and that's absolutely key for me. Health is really important as well. So, you know, 92% saying health is really important. Um, Over-indexing slightly, so a higher percentage of Republic of Ireland shoppers um, concerned about health than in the north. Um, quality is really, really, really important. So believing that quality is the most important factor. So 84% um, believe that. And again, in the Republic of Ireland, um, it seems to come through a little bit more. Um, but 62% have said, look, I'm actually less concerned about price if the quality is good. So they're really, you know, the price is really important, but again, there is that willingness to, to pay more um, if the quality is good. But we're going to just focus on getting the pri price right for the moment. And what we look at here is the percentage of shoppers who buy into um, to groceries that are priced at 10, 10 pence per, per pack, right the way up to, to five pounds per pack. And we've just trended that out, looking at Tesco in the blue, Sainsbury's in the orange, and Asda in the red. So there are definite price points when shoppers are actually drop out um, and say, actually, I'm not going to pay any more than two pound per pack um, for these grocery items. So this is very much total grocery, but definitely you can see drop offs there at the two pound pack, at the four pound pack, 450 shoppers are saying, actually, I'm going to think, think, no, I might not buy at that price point. So getting your price point is really fundamentally important. Um, and round pound pricing really resonates with, with um, Northern Ireland shoppers. So in the lighter green, we have no, the percentage of spend going through at a round pound price in Northern Ireland. And then in the darker green, we have the percentage of spend in the Republic of Ireland going through at round euro. So I mean, it, there's, it's absolutely key there if you can do anything around getting that price point right. Um, but it's really been driven originally, I suppose, by ASDA in, in the green there. You can see ASDA has really driven that over the year, uh, over the last kind of five years. But Tesco and Sainsbury really getting on the back of that now and really trying to, 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 um, to get that round pound pricing right as well because it does resonate there. So the next area I'm going to look at is about local. And local is really important to Northern Ireland shoppers, um, in particular in Fresh, prod, uh, fresh and produce, fresh fruit, veg, etc. Um, so we asked shoppers again, how important is actually is local? Um, Sixty-four percent um, have said this. I will tr I will try to buy products that are actually made in my country. Um, when you look at that by region, it's fifty-eight percent say they're going to actually try and, and buy produce within their own region. And then we asked them specifically about Irish brands. Are Irish brands best value? And you can see that drops down to, to under 30%, 27%. And not surprisingly, it's, it's less, um, less important for Northern Ireland shoppers than, than the Republic of Ireland shoppers. Um, but we, we looked at this then just by category, just to get, you, get a better overview of which categories um, is local more important. So meat, fish, and poultry. This is in Northern Ireland, um, shop, uh, Northern Ireland shoppers are saying, meat, fish, and poultry is really important to, to be local. For me, it has to be local, so 87%. Um, closely followed then, 83% say dairy must be local and um, produce, are, it's really important, um, fruit and veg and then cooked meat as well. So these are all key categories where if you're thinking about going north, thinking about local and think about you know, the, what, what we need to do to have that local presence and have that local message if there is one. For these other categories, so the likes of craft beer, frozen, ambient, um, they're less sensitive to that local, um, you know, local being important. So again, thinking about kind of what we can do to to um, 
to go after um, the, the Northern Ireland shopper. It's actually less important for local there. Um, I also just have this for the, the Republic of Ireland shoppers who answered the survey. So, um, meat, fish, poultry and dairy came out as number one, so joint number one, so 86% um, of the shoppers say local is really important, um, followed by cooked meat and fruit and veg. And then we have um, the rest, the, the, the four there. So just a slight difference in terms of um, order of, of um, there between frozen and ambient, etc. But those fresh produce really, really important for local. Um, so where should local suppliers look for growth? So we, we say, okay, where are, they, where are the areas of opportunity um, for growth? So beer is one of the strongest growing categories, so 10.4% growth, albeit you know, it makes up 2.6% of overall grocery in Northern Ireland. But given that it's the strongest growing category that we looked at, and given the local sensitivity isn't there as much, perhaps this is, this is an area of opportunity. Um, frozen food is growing really um, quite strongly as well at 2.2%, and um, then dairy and ambient, and then we have um, the rest following up. So definitely those top four there are the key kind of um, growth areas and growth categories where we should look for for growth. So that's it in terms of the, the first few opportunities, and Clean is going to take over on the premiumization of brands. Great, thanks very much. Thanks. As I hung core a little bit, because my intro was meant to be more complete, and I was meant to say that we went to the cross-border counties for Republic of Ireland, so wherever we talk about Republic of Ireland, it was just cross-border. That's my fault. Um, we're going to talk about the final three then in terms of opportunities. And the first one is that premium brands can really convince on quality. So you saw from what Cora said earlier that people definitely want to bargain, but if the quality is right, price becomes less important. And obviously that's something we want to know more about. So we're going to focus on that here. Um, what we've done is we've asked NI shoppers whether they um, are driven by certain motivating factors when they buy. And we've asked Republic of Ireland shoppers the same. So the first here is better um, value for money. And we ask them whether that's better in Northern Ireland, neither or in the Republic. So you can see the factors building in there. Certainly people feeling it's better value in Northern Ireland when they're a Northern Irish shopper, better value in the Republic if I'm a Republic of Ireland shopper. Nothing shocking. When it comes to the better range of products, you can see that actually there's something that stands out there, which is that Northern Ireland is really seen as a better range of products. Important for the Northern Irish shoppers, 57%. We don't see the same skew for the Irish shoppers. Some of the Irish shoppers are thinking that going to Sainsbury's, going to Asda, they're getting more of a range up there. Next one we're going to focus on is better quality products. So this one is what I'm going to really go through in more detail in this, um, in this section. But just to call out to you, only 3% of Northern Irish shoppers feel that there's better quality of products in, in, the, in the Republic. So really the Republic brands are not calling out to them as I wish that was on the shelf for me. I wish I could get that in Asda and Sainsbury's in Northern Ireland. So something we need to look at a little bit more closely. And finally, better local brands. So again, you can see the detail on this. All of these slides available to you afterwards if you want to delve into them in more detail. So just talking about that quality messaging then and what that means for you. Obviously, as a messaging, it's about communication, it's about marketing, it's about <coughs> communicating that quality of your brand to Northern Irish shoppers. That's at the marketing level for the shopper and getting into the basket, but what about getting into the retailers? What I'm focusing on here is the premiumization message. So really, if we look across the retailers and we look at the price per pack they've been getting over the last year, you can see that that's actually declined, and they're actually seeing a lot of deflation in their prices. So if they continue to focus on the strategy that they're in, they're taking value out of their sales for themselves. And how can you help them with this? Well, certainly it's not going to be a private label strategy that helps them grow those prices. It's going to be brands that really drive that. So bringing home the message that yes, we're a brand and yes, we're premium, but that's actually what you need at the moment to grow sales. It's an important point. Next one we're going to go into is cross-border. Cross-border is a focus for a lot of our clients. They ask us about it a lot. So we talk to our shoppers about it. And what we found is that 66% of those cross-border counties do shop in Northern Ireland for groceries. So they are going up there. And how that splits out, then you can see 11% of them are going often and 56 occasionally. So the 11% that are going often, that's definitely something we need, need to think about if we're not present in Northern Ireland. In terms of how that will change, they, then how they expect to be influenced by Brexit, only 9% said they will increase the frequency of that trip across border. So it's not a huge amount, it's kind of a niche, but we need to understand it all the same, understand the opportunity that it creates and also the risk if you're not present in Northern Ireland. Just putting it in a little bit of context in terms of the size of this prize, what you're looking at here is the share of grocery Asda and Sainsbury's have of Republic of Ireland household spend. 
And at the peak there back in 2014, it's just 1%. So it's not a huge amount of grocery spend that's going cross-border. It's a niche part of the market. But it is on an upward trend. So from last um, January, we've looked at 0.2% up to 07 So certainly more of the market is growing up there. And for you guys then, what does it mean for my category? What we really focused on here is the value element. If people are going to Northern Ireland, it's because they think they're getting better value up there. But how does that split across the categories? So you can see here for frozen food, we have a percentage of shoppers that feel they get better value for money um, in Northern Ireland, in Republic of Ireland, or equal. So this is um, your Republic of Ireland shoppers answering this. The border counties, where do they feel they get better value for money? And you can see 51% of them feel they get better value for money in frozen in Northern Ireland. So if you're a frozen producer, you're a frozen supplier, and you're in Northern Ireland, be aware that they're looking to you for value. And if you're not present in Northern Ireland, you need to communicate on that messaging when you go there. It's really going to be key in that category. A few more where it's very important, ambient, craft beer as well. People go north for alcohol for bargains quite often. Um, and bakery as well. So those are the key categories. You can see the rest of them building in here where it's not really as important to them to get that value, Republic of Ireland versus Northern Ireland. The key takeaway from this slide is if you're present in those top categories, value messaging is really important for you and your success in Northern Ireland. Next one then that we're going to focus on, um, brands being more important in Northern Ireland. So we talked about Northern Ireland and the differences in the markets. One of the key differences that always jumps out at us is how important brands are to Northern Irish shoppers. So you can see here the percentage of spend that goes on brands versus private label in the Republic of Ireland on the left, in Britain in the middle, and then in the north on the right. So 53% of spend in Northern Ireland goes to brands. This is kind of a factor of the market in that we don't have discounters in the same presence in the same way. As Cora said, we don't have Aldi, Little have a smaller presence. And as Cora also, also mentioned, the convenience retailers, the symbols are stronger in Northern Ireland. So through Spar, et cetera, brands have a bit of better presence in the market. So this gives you a really strong message to bring to retailers. Brands really matter up here. I have to get brands right. But what is important as well is how the retailers are doing on brands. So it's not like just because brands are important in Northern Ireland, everyone is growing with them. Yes, at total market level, brands are growing, so the opportunity is there. But you can see across the retailers how it builds in. Tesco, Sainsbury's and Lidl all saw declining sales year on year with their brands. They only grew through their PL. So brands are really hampering their performance and they're not getting it right for NI shoppers who want brands. You can see there's a bit of a change there for Asda and the Symbols. They're doing much better on them. And the thing I want to focus on, again, harking back to what Cora said earlier, that battle for second place. Sainsbury's and Asda, as we know, are really close. And if we look at Sainsbury's, they're not growing on brands where Asda are. So they're taking value out of their sales by only growing through their PL offering and seeing a decline in their brands. And if we look at their share trended over time, this isn't doing them any favours. They need to turn around that brand performance if they're going to win back spend, if they're going to gain prominence as a number two retailer in the market. So for you as a brand owner, coming to them with this message and how you can help them to gain back that price per pack, that premium, that brand positioning is really important. So that's it for me and Cora. This is a summary of what we've gone through. Um, through the work we've done with Maria, there is more. There's appendixes, et cetera, that you'll be able to get access to. We're also putting together uh, retailer summaries and profiles for each of the retailers in Northern Ireland. <laughs> so we've completed store visits. We have their strategies, the categories that they're doing well in and that they need help in. So anything you're really thinking about in terms of Northern Ireland, do reach out to Maria and we should be able to help you. If anyone has any questions? Yeah. Sorry, I work for Lear Chocolates, Dennis Dunning from Lear Chocolates. We don't actually deal in Northern Ireland today, right. but we're in Northern Ireland via the okay. UK multiples. So from anybody who has a little bit more direct experience of the Northern Ireland market, how much of the opportunity that you're presenting there is, is actually accessible, and how much of it is being decided in sort of Welling Garden City and Angel Square and the head offices of the UK? Yes, yeah, so I understand what you're saying in that if I know all of this, will they even listen? Um, I think what it depends on is who you're talking to. So obviously for Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, that strategy might be set from headquarters. It might become more devolved as Brexit takes an impact, as everything becomes more devolved perhaps. So talking to them now and getting ahead of it is important. The fact that you know the Northern Irish shopper is different, you might know that better than they do. So I think getting out in front of it is very important. And then on the other side of things, we talked about the symbols and how important they are. So Spar in particular, they certainly are thinking in NI, thinking with NI in mind. And as well as that Lidl, if you're thinking about Lidl, 
NI versus ROI versus GB. Very different strategies, very different positions in the market. So definitely they'll be open to what you know on that market. Hi, Jen. That's where, uh, as Kim's point out, uh, a lot of it depends on. You see, you can have a, a line listed through the UK, and if you're not a local uh, distributor, also getting lines listed in those accounts as well. So, so uh, it isn't just um, a case of one shoving out the other. Uh, we would have some lines, uh, let's say in Sainz, or, um, let's say in Tesco, or as the supplier through the distributor, and we would have some lines going through uh, their head office. So. Yeah, sorry, just to add to that, um, Carl, and um, you, Sainsbury's and Tesco, we got an award in Sainsbury's and got this in, in Sainsbury's and I, that was our big break initially, and we got into Sainsbury's and the UK mainland yeah. from that, yeah. but, yeah. but Tesco, and, but Tesco then, we, we couldn't get in Tesco and I, we got listings in, in Tesco UK mainland, and as a result, we got all the stores in NI, so, you know, yeah, well, whatever we're we're Any other questions? No? Maria? It just remains to say thank you very much to Tlina and to Cora for that. And um, we will circulate around the. Um, as I said, we will circulate around the presentations, but if you've got anything specific on the Northern Irish market, you can just um, address it to me. So it's just maria.stokes at boardbia.ie, and the details will be on the presentation as well. Um, or and if there's anything that comes up, it's something that we are going to be tracking and pursuing, obviously, as things are evolving, um, and tracking the, the retailer strategies up there as well, because we're seeing some changes already. So any queries or questions you have, please do direct them to us. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.